you can roughly cut it half 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 is the brazilian effect it's good and bad news uh, brazil has a uh, lower than our average um, um, margin uh, across the group but this it, it is growing much uh, faster than we anticipated so that is very good news and the other half is the effect essentially of the currencies um, because the euro has been so strong and much more uh, stronger than uh, we anticipated and and that weighs on our input cost on all the transactional and partly the trans uh, translational effect uh, due to the, the, the foreign exchange towards the Europe. Now, that, that, those are the two um, explanations why we have revised uh, our guidance. The good news, obviously, is that uh, we have a good and, and strong uh, revenue growth and, uh, and we continue to invest behind that uh, revenue uh, growth uh, unabided uh, because I, we think we, we have the, the right uh, programs and, and the right actions in place. And so we're not going to change on, on that account. I'll put a bit more flesh on the bones than around Brazil because I think investors are well versed around the currency impact, which you have flagged up before as one of the issues around that margin. When it comes to Brazil, I know you've put a lot of time and effort into that market and that comes down to that acquisition of the Brazilian assets from Kieran. And you've also, according to reports, been fighting it up pub by pub, restaurant by restaurant across Brazil, trying to improve your market share. Is it costing you more to grow your presence in that market? Is that what's going wrong on some of the operating numbers? Uh, no, it doesn't cost us more. I think it came uh, as, as a surprise that the, the premium uh, market is growing faster than we anticipated. Our legacy portfolio largely centered around, around Heineken, but also with the Amstel brand and Sol brand, which are all positioned in the premium uh, uh, end of the market, are growing double digit. And so do the brands that we acquired from Kirin Brazil in the premium part of its portfolio. Brands like the Vassa Baden Baden or Eisenbahn are also uh, growing all uh, double digit, whilst our mainstream brands are holding up quite well. So the mix is good. Uh, the synergies are flowing uh, through in Brazil and, and the growth is higher than anticipated. That explains also what I said earlier, is that it, it, uh, it, it comes in still at a lower margin than our group average, but also we, we gain, of course, confidence that in the years ahead, uh, we will be able to catch up also in Brazil with the margins. Uh, Jean-Francois, can I ask you then about the geographical split here? Um, the, the message on volumes appears to be strong in emerging still. Um, could you just walk us through perhaps uh, how you're doing globally and where there are any potential areas of concern? Huh. <laughs> we always have, when you are operating in so many countries, you have areas of concern. Uh, since uh, now a couple of years, Africa has been uh, lagging behind in terms of growth. But then again, if you, if you look country by country, some are really very promising, like for us, South Africa or Ethiopia. And some countries have difficulties, like Nigeria, where, where we continue uh, to struggle uh, in Nigeria. Uh, but also countries like the DRC, where we struggle a lot uh, due to... Uh, a lot of political instability over there. Those are, I would say, a little bit the concern spots uh, we, we have across, uh, across the world. You will always have them, but we have much more uh, positive uh, uh, markets now, or, or markets which have a positive momentum at the moment, including, by the way, uh, uh, Europe. So that, that is for us rather good news. And, and we continue to work on these markets where we should improve. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.